Hello and welcome back to the Baggies podcast YouTube channel where of course we're giving you all the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. We're back again today for another match preview video. It's West Bromwich Albion versus Middlesbrough away uh, in the EFL Championship at the Riverside. Uh, it's a quarter to eight kickoff uh, on Tuesday night. So yeah, looking forward to this one. I say looking forward to it. I, I, I'm really intrigued by the sort of changes that Steve Bruce could make to the lineup tomorrow. You know, obviously we saw after the Luton game that he was very, very upset with his team's performance and rightly so because it was dreadful. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he what he kind of makes of uh, makes of his team selection tomorrow. And um, yeah, I'd be looking forward to seeing what you guys think as well. Make sure you drop your comments down below as to who you'd play, what you're thinking ahead of the game, how you're feeling at the moment about Albion. Just drop your comments down below. Uh, yeah, and if you're new around here, please be sure to subscribe. The match previews come out uh, at least a day before every game. So, you know, they include all your latest, you know, tactics, um, you know, what we can expect from the opposition, what we can expect from Albion, uh, predicted lineups to both sides, bit of a score prediction at the end as well. And of course, just my general thoughts on Albion at the moment as well. So if you want to see more of these sorts of videos, which they are, they come out every once one or two times a week, depending on the game, make sure you subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. But yeah, it's West Bromwich Albion, Middlesbrough. It's time for a match preview. You're watching the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. For match previews, match day vlogs, match reactions and more, make sure to subscribe to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. So let's crack on and start with the opposition. Middlesbrough, of course, away at the Riverside this game. Uh, they've got a very good home record, to say the least. They're seventh in the championship at the moment, doing very well. And only three losses under their new manager, Chris Wilder. He took over uh, back in November. Uh, I remember the game that I was in the, the Albion press box for was uh, for Neil Warnock's last game in charge. So that was, uh, that was quite interesting to see the reaction to that. But obviously they brought in Chris Wilder. He's come in. He's done a fantastic job and he's really galvanised this Middlesbrough side who aren't, who aren't a bad championship side whatsoever. Let's, let's make no mistakes about it. This isn't like a, I wouldn't say this is a miracle with this Middlesbrough side. I think they are a good championship side and they've got plenty of good assets. Um, uh, obviously, he's a manager that West Bromwich Albion looked at in the summer, but they only lost one out of five of their last five games uh, with a couple of, with only one draw in there as well. So, yeah, they are doing very, very well at the moment, Middlesbrough. And, and, and look, the... Um, Look the part. Their only loss came in the last game, which was against Bristol City. So, yeah, I think this is going to be interesting. Obviously, Chris Wilder is a former former manager of Sheffield United. Uh, he had talks with West Bromwich Albion in the summer before Valerian Ishmael took over. Uh, I mean, he was rejected by the owner, Guacho and Lai, uh, due to his previous history with the Sheffield United owners. So, yeah, it's pretty annoying, to be honest. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure a lot of Albion fans, would, have, including probably myself, would have Hope that we did go for Chris Wilder in the end, but it really wasn't to be. I mean, he was all but confirmed to be manager, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just went to pot. And uh, Guachuan Lai, the owner or the controlling shareholder, as he's been called, pulled the plug completely on the deal. So, yeah, uh, that was uh, that's obviously disappointing and disappointing to see how um, how he's gone uh, and, and gone gone and done really well at Borough and, and really galvanised them and, and you know taken their squad to a different level that they were under Neil Warnock and. Yeah, it's just very, very, very annoying as a, you know, as a club that could have had him. But yeah, of course, Borough, massive credit to them doing really well this season. Their top scorer is Matt Crooks with eight goals. Um, Yeah, he's been a very good signing. I think there's on him from Rotherham. I think I've seen a lot of Borough fans. I do get a few of them on the timeline on Twitter, you know, saying he's one of the the best signings they've ever made. And obviously their top assister is Isaiah Jones, who's their right wing back, right midfielder, if you like. He's been doing very well. And the fact that they have Jed Spence, Spence on their books, who's a, on loan at Nottingham Forest at the moment, but doing very very well there. Uh, I think, you know, it's a really interesting, really interesting combination as to who, if, if Jed Spence come back from loan and stays, stays at Middlesbrough, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But Isaiah Jones, eight assists, done very well so far this season and, and looking like one of the brightest prospects in England at the moment. Um, but yeah, Middlesbrough, <laughs> yeah, it can't be understated that the, the job they're doing. Of course, they've got some, some other good goal scorers in there. They've got a, a Andres Spora, who, if you remember in the last game, had a, a chance to actually win the game against Albion last time out. Um, he was quite unlucky not to do so. It was a very good save right at the death from Sam Johnston. But, you know, they're doing really well at the moment, Middlesbrough, and it's, it's credit to them as to, to the work that they're doing and, and how they're playing. But, you know, there's plenty of players in there that, that you look at and, and think that they are decent championship level players. Of course, they've got former former Albion man uh, in their ranks, and that is um, Lee Peltier, who who uh, I don't think has played too much this season, only 14 games and, 
and most of them really off the bench, I think. But you know, he's he he played seven games for us uh, in the in between uh, January twenty twenty and July twenty twenty one. So yeah, that'll be. Uh, I I don't think we really have any specific memories of other other than the fact that he um when the ball was thrown in by Sam Allardyce, Lee Peltier was the guy who was supposed to take the throw in, and he was just like, what's what's my manager doing taking a throw in for me? You know, he's taking the Mickey a bit, but. Yeah, let's crack on with Borough. Uh, their third most, they have the third most shots on target per ninety in the division. Four point eight shots on target per ninety. Uh, they're doing very well in terms of their attacking output, and third most successful tackles per ninety with nine point nine. So they're very physical, and they're going to be very competitive. And that, you know, I remember watching them against Man United in the FA Cup a tie that they eventually won on penalties. You know, they look the business, and they certainly look like a side to to watch out for in the Championship. But you know, to put a side like Man United, I know it's on penalties in the end, but their, their game plan, I think, was executed relatively perfectly, which was to nick a goal at one end. And, you know, it was, it was great to see them. them so, uh, I, I'm not a fan of Man United. I don't, don't, don't particularly like them at all. So, you know, it was nice to see um, nice to see Borough getting one over and seeing a fellow championship side doing doing the business over, over, over a side like that. But, you know, they've got the four least goals conceded per 90 in the division with only one goal conceded per 90. Uh, we've got, we're actually higher in that table, surprisingly, considering the defensive displays we've seen recently. Um We've actually only conceded 0.9 goals per 90, so our defence is actually still pretty solid, uh, considering you know how shaky the entire side has looked. Um, predicted 11 for Middlesbrough, of course. I'm just going to go with what they did in the last game. Not sure. I don't think they picked up any specific injuries, but of course, uh, Joe Lumley in goal, uh, a back three of Ditch Deal. Ditch Deal is very, very good. I, I don't actually think he's a centre back. I think he's actually a full back converted into that position, but he's doing very well. Dale Fry kept Ronaldo in his pocket during that game. Uh, Paddy McNair, formerly of Man United, I'm sure you remember. Isaiah Jones, of course, at that right wing back position. Midfield three of Matt Crooks, Johnny Housen, whose career seems to seems to go on forever. Uh, Marcus Tavernier, of course, another player that I think has caused us a few problems in the past. Uh, Neil Taylor at left wing back. Um, then Aaron Connolly and Falaran Balogun, Falaran Balogun and Aaron Connolly, both on loan from Premier League clubs with Brighton and Arsenal, respectively. So that's what we can expect from Middlesbrough, but what can we expect from Albion? And I'm going to say this, it's, it's, we're not expecting a lot from Albion. Uh, we're 11th in the championship at the moment, which, you know, quite frankly, is an unacceptable position to be in, uh, you know, as a club and it's, it's pretty awful. Um, haven't won under Steve Bruce yet. One win in 11 games uh, in the past 11 games and no win in five games as well. So, you know, we are clearly in an, an awful, awful run of form. Um I think Steve Bruce, he has got a huge job on his hands here. You know, the players have clearly given up. I think that that's a fair statement to make. I think it's not not rash, not not unjust. You know, there are a few that obviously give or take that are trying the best. But, you know, the majority of them have really, really stopped playing uh, for any manager. And I think Steve Bruce is, is quite a difficult one to understand because he seems like a perfectly nice guy. Uh, maybe Ishmael, I can kind of, I can understand giving up for maybe at some point under him, or maybe not being perhaps buying into him because obviously he's so heavy-handed with his discipline and and insisted on playing a certain way. But Steve Bruce, you know, seems a, a quite nice arm around the shoulder, a bit of a fatherly figure, very personable, and I can't see for the life of me where these players would, why these players would want to give up under him already. You know, after three games, you know. It's quite ridiculous that a manager is having to to question the character of players and question the performance levels and the effort levels and and the uh, and the, the kind of um, you know ability to stay in games and and fight till the end. I think that's ridiculous. He's he's three games in as your manager and you know he's already having to question your your commitment to the side. I think that's quite embarrassing as a professional footballer who gets paid quite a significant sum of money. Uh, you know you look at the side. I, I dread to think what Luton players are play, paid in comparison to to Albion's players because. You know, they they probably get paid, you know, peanuts, but they 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 certainly worked harder than any Albion player, you know, many Albion any of the Albion players on the pitch, and they 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 won the game by doing that. You know, I can forgive, you know, a lack of quality, lack of ability, lack of you know quality on the ball. That's not necessarily there. That's not necessarily players' fault. But when they're not putting the effort in, to, to I think there is enough quality in that squad to to be in the playoffs. I do think, you know, largely certainly in the attacking areas and defensive areas, I think the midfield's a bit missing with that sort of quality. But certainly in both of those ends of the pitch, I think there is there is quality there. But so far, the, under Steve Bruce, the effort levels have not been there, and I hope that Steve Bruce does make some changes. Um, it, it was a game that we deserved to lose at Luton, uh, gave up really and caved in during that second half. And, you know, I think it's quite embarrassing that, you know, as I said, that Bruce is having to question their character and their commitment to the cause. Um, literally three games into his tenure, it's absolutely ridiculous. These players should not 
be allowed to get away with that and get away with the performance like that. And Steve Bruce himself said that. So I'm hoping that he's going to make some changes. I'm hoping that he's going to change some things about and bring in some younger, fresher faces. I think I said this on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that already, uh, myself and Joe from the Albion Show podcast, chat over that Luton game and sort of give our thoughts of that. So make sure you go and check that out. I'll leave a little, if you wait till the end of the video, there'll be a, a little video card popping up at the end. So yeah, I think... Um, in terms of that, that's quite ridiculous how he's having to question character and I hope he makes some changes to, to show for it because you can't just keep persisting with the same players that are letting you down. So here's what I would go for. I, yeah, I, I will say there is a position missing because I genuinely do not know who to put there. I think there are a few candidates from the academy, but uh, I wouldn't want to see who's been starting there recently start again. Uh, I'd put Sam Johnston in goal. Right back is the position I'm struggling with. I mean, I'd look, I want to see Taylor Gardner Hickman play, but I'd like to see him in the midfield rather than right, right, right mid right back but you know if he doesn't want to put him there that's not the end of the world but I couldn't have th thought of anybody to put in maybe Ethan Ingram's an option Zach Ashworth is an option but he's typical typically more left-sided so yeah that's what I'd go for really uh is, is to, to change some things about put some academy players in there put, put some younger players in there let them sit let, maybe not a complete overhaul keep some senior names in there that you know are going to try for you um, in the back four, I put, you know, obviously right back is a bit of a question mark, but Dara O'Shea, I need to, I need to see him come back into the side. I think, you know, he's, he's definitely a, a player that I think we've all missed. And I think he's probably one of our better defenders. I put him alongside Carl Bartley. People say, you know, that he's rubbish. You know, Sam Allardyce, who everybody, you know, including myself has said, you know, look at the way he really, uh, stripped the, stripped apart the squad when he came in last January. Um, and Carl Bartley was one of the names that he bought, he kept. So I think that there's no reason to believe that Carl Bartley is not one of those given the highest performance that he can. I put Connor Townsend in. I think he's looked a bit sloppy, but I certainly think that he's got the ability to to, to turn things around. I think he's playing at the top of his game and he's certainly doing very well. Uh, what, well in terms of effort, I just don't think the quality is, is turning out for him. In the midfield, I'd go for a midfield three. I'd go for Jason Malumbi. I think for all his flaws, I think he's certainly trying his best. I think... Um, you know, he's definitely working as hard as he can. I think the quality isn't there, but I can certainly see the effort in there to, to keep going. Uh, and then in front of him, I'll go for Taylor Garden Hickman and Kevin Castro. I'd like to see those two players come in and, and show some youth and, and hopefully some, some, some legs in midfield because, quite frankly, there just hasn't been enough of it. And I can see that, you know, you know that there is trying a bit from reach, but he's just not got the, the ability, I think, to play in that midfield. I think he's a left-sided player, uh, ultimately. Then I'd probably go for uh, I'd probably go for Dean Garner um, on the left midfield, uh, and I'd probably go for Ray and Tulloch on the right midfield. I'd like to see those those players come back in, uh, and then I'd like to go for Andy Carroll up front. I think basically you know you make the instructions quite clear. Andy Carroll is gonna you basically say to to the, the young lad Andy Carroll is gonna win you know most of the stuff that comes his way. So gamble and, and get around him because Carlin Grant did not do a good not good enough job of, of of getting around Andy Carroll, and I thought that was that was pretty shameful to be honest. Um, and I'd like to see some of these younger, fresher faces show up the, the senior players in the squad and, and show them how to how to how to win games and and how to put the effort in required. But you know I think Jake Livermore is a it, it, it's quite a worrying case because everybody was saying he doesn't come back into this squad. I think I personally think he walks back into the midfield now, and that is quite, you know, um, you know, because it, because of the effort he puts in. And I think you know he he does walk back into this midfield now. But we'll see what happens with that lineup. Make sure you drop your thoughts down below. I'd like to see some younger, fresher faces in the lineup, and I'm sure that some of you would as well. So drop your comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and that's the end of this match preview. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.